So Paleozoics won YCS Atlanta. Don't think any of us saw that coming. What's going on guys, it's Simo. Now today I wanted to discuss with you my top reasons for why I feel that Paleozoics took first place at YCS Atlanta. As I said in the beginning of the video, I don't think it's something we were really expecting since Zodiacs are just so prolific right now in the format. The engine has established itself and the deck has established itself as being the best deck. And yet Paleozoic just pretty much came out of nowhere. It had, I believe, three spots in the top 32 and it ended up getting first place. So why, rather than kind of, you know, saying like, oh my God, this is such an amazing feat that Paleozoic, no, 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 Paleozoic is an incredibly strong deck, and after, you know, analyzing it further, there are a lot of reasons as to why I believe Paleozoic did, in fact, take first place at Atlanta. So to start off, I want to discuss the lack of back row removal in the main deck. I did a video about this very discussion, or this very topic rather, kind of discussing there's this whole dilemma going on with how to handle back row removal with a card like Dimensional Barrier existing in the game. So you can check out that video as well for more in-depth discussion on that. But as I was looking at the top deck profiles from the top cut of YCS Atlanta, Really, not a lot of them were even main decking Twin Twister or any form of spell and trap removal. A lot of them decided to allocate those spell and trap removal options to their side deck for games two and three. Now, a couple of people were playing Twin Twisters, Chase Cunningham was playing MSTs in the main deck, and one or two players might have been playing Cosmic Cyclone, but for the most part, there really wasn't you know, really any players that were playing the spell and trap removal in their main deck, it was allocated to their side, and this gave Paleozoic a very, very strong game one, because without that back row disruption, not only is it good for interrupting their ability to resummon Paleo monsters from their graveyard, but it also means they're not going to get end phase twin twister and get two of their best cards blown out just in the end phase before the Zodiac player or whichever player takes their next turn. Now, I did mention D Barrier a little bit earlier, and I feel like D Barrier is another point of discussion here because Paleozoic, while it is very susceptible to D Barrier, whether you're playing it with uh, Zodiacs or not, D Barrier doesn't really do a whole lot against Paleozoic because if you manage to stop their totally awesome play, they have a massive amount of back row that they can just set and that you have to fight through. And if you don't deal with all their back row, then you're going to have to proceed on your next turn to deal with their totally awesome again anyway. So they don't mind playing the grind game. The Paleozoic deck is very good at playing the slow game. And that's really how it thrives best. And now that players are shifting their Zodiac builds to be more trap heavy and to kind of focus on the mirror match because the mirror match is a very resource intensive uh, battle for the most part. So players are kind of making their builds have a lot more traps like Storming Mirror Force, Compulsory Evacuation Device, Torrential Tribute, all these other really kind of, you know, techie if you want to call them traps. But that means that Zodiac decks are slowing down a little bit. You know, they're kind of shifting away from the Kaiju Zodiac, you know, I'm going to OTK you on turn two mentality and really preparing for that grindy mirror match. But that gives Paleozoic an advantage as well because that's where the deck does its best. The Paleozoic deck can completely outgrind, for the most part, any deck just based on circumstances, but if you were to just weigh it, you know, one deck versus another, Paleo's gonna win the grind game because the deck is just essentially built for that. It has a much slower start, but once Paleozoic gets going, it is incredibly hard to stop. And you know, what's cool is, even if Paleozoic does get hit by D Barrier, the Paleo player is pretty much gonna plus off of that because they can chain their Paleo to the activation of it and get a free monster anyway. So every time you're using as a Zodiac player or any other type of deck, anytime you're using these really powerful traps, the Paleo player is actually netting advantage off of it and you're losing advantage even though you're delaying them by a turn, they're still going to have enough advantage to outgrind you in the long run. Now, looking at the Paleozoic's card pool in general, the Paleo cards actually have a lot of very impactful 
uh, effects when it comes to handling the Zodiac matchup. Canadia, for example, is essentially Book of Moon, and Book of Moon is only at one in our TCG format, so it's like the Paleo players playing three copies of Book of Moon that are themed for the archetype, and they can even be playing a fourth copy of the lone Book of Moon on top of that. And that means that if your Rat Peer or anything like that gets Book of Moon, if you don't have the barrage for the follow-up play, like your turn's pretty much over, you have to set your back row and hope you don't die. Then Looking at Dino Mischus, you know, Dino Mischus is basically Karma Cut, and while it's a, not, you know, as good as Karma Cut, just removing one of the Rat Peers from play can pretty much stop a Zodiac player entirely, or at least slow them down to a very significant extent. Then you have probably the best addition to the Paleozoic deck from Raging Tempest, and that is Lost Wind. Lost Wind is such an incredible card for the Paleozoic deck for so many different reasons. First off, it's negating the effect, so it's basically like a Fiendish Chain or a Phantom Knight uh, uh, Fog Blade or anything like that, but then it also has the attack of the monster permanently, and why that's so good is because if you're negating the effect of a Zodiac Xyz monster, its attack becomes zero permanently, and because it's a card that is modifying attack and defense values, that means you can use it in the damage step during the battle phase and really fuck with your opponent. And not only that, because it's a trap, you can chain your Paleos to it, and you're getting the recursive use out of Lost Wind as well, because if your opponent special summons an extra deck monster, you get to reset Lost Wind and basically double dip for value to get your Paleozoics out of the graveyard and also negate two effects as well. Lost Wind just does so much for the deck, it really elevates the deck and takes it to a completely new level, in my opinion. Then you also have Morella, which can send Lost Wind from the deck to the graveyard because Morella sends a trap in a foolish burial manner. It doesn't have to be a Paleozoic trap, any trap. So by already getting your Lost Wind in the graveyard, Morella plus Lost Wind actually helps accelerate the Paleozoic engine and make it a lot more consistent because the second you set that Lost Wind, you have Morella in grave. So the next time you activate it, you're going to get Morella back and you're already so far ahead at that point that it's a little bit ridiculous. Now the other cool thing about the Paleozoics is that they're immune to monster effects and one of the biggest problems going against any zoo deck is Zodiac Dryden. and because Dryden is a monster effect and the Paleozoics are immune to it, if you have a couple of Paleozoics on the field, you know, Zodiac Dryden's not going to be able to do jack shit, and then you can go and overlay into your Totally Awesome, and then if you try to kill that, well, I mean, then Totally Awesome's just going to completely wreck you anyway. So, having that immunity to monster effects, you know, people are running cards like Forbidden Chalice, My Body is a Shield, all these other, you know, cards that they need to run to negate the activations of these monster effects, the fact that the Paleozoics have built-in immunity to monster effects means that the Paleozoic players don't necessarily need to run these extraneous cards because their monsters basically do the work for them entirely. Now on top of that, you also have the amazing card and that grass looks greener for any 60 card variants because most Zodiac decks are playing 40 cards. There are some exceptions, there were some people playing 58 card Kaiju Zodiac at Atlanta, but for the most part, when you're playing against a zoo deck, you're going to be playing a 40 card deck, maybe 41, 42, but when it comes to that grass looks greener and you're playing a 60 card deck, you're milling so much advantage that it doesn't even matter. And by just getting that, getting your lost wins in the graveyard, getting your paleos, your Ronin totems, uh, hell, even breakthrough skills, there's so many powerful cards that the paleo deck runs that it wants to mill off that grass looks greener. And if it manages to go off, then, you know, you're in for a lot of trouble if you're playing a Zodiac deck. Now, taking all that into consideration, there was one last factor that I think really helped Paleo perform well at YCS Atlanta, and I really think that people didn't really side for Paleo. When looking at the side decks and hearing people discuss their theory, most people were focused on three things. They were focused on the Zodiac Mirror Match, they were focused on Infernoid because people really hate that matchup, and they were also focused on Invoked. And ironically, Invoked wasn't even that well represented because a lot of people, I think, figured out that the Pure Build, the Kaiju Build, hell, even Paleozoic or Infernoids were just kind of better. You know, people were kind of playing with the Wind Witch Artifact Build, things like that. But for the most part, you know, Invoked really did not show up like people were expecting. So I think people made a miscalculation in not citing cards like Denko Seca. Like, 
I did not see a single person cite Denko Seca from the deck profiles that I've seen thus far, and I've watched a lot of them, and, or a Royal Decree, or just a card that is like solely dedicated to the Paleozoic matchup that really could have helped. Like I said towards the beginning of the video, I know people were playing Twin Twisters or MSTs in the side deck, but you know, having a dedicated card like Denko Seca or Royal Decree can really just help blow out that matchup entirely because Paleozoic really doesn't have an answer unless they happen to have the Solemn Warding or like the Olenoides to be able to pop a Royal Decree or something like that on activation. It's very niche how they have to deal with a Denko Seca, and it can honestly just be a complete and other blowout. But last but not least, a lot of people were kind of backing off on board wipes, which board wipes can completely turn the table on a Paleo match, and people were kind of backing off of the extra Dark Holes. A lot of people were mainly Regeki, but Dark Hole kind of took a back seat for this event because a lot of people were playing Starlight Road and My Body is a Shield, so people were kind of preparing for that by not playing the board wipes, and playing more cards that could play around those specific cards in general. And by not having those board wipes, I think Paleozoic just had another advantage here because without a board wipe, it's really easy for the Paleozoic field to just get out of control and pretty much just overwhelm the field. So overall, those are my thoughts as to why I think Paleozoic won YCS Atlanta. It was a really good event to watch, and overall, it's going to have a very tremendous impact on the meta because now that people saw that Paleozoic does very well against the Zodiac matchup, it's going to affect how many people decide to start playing the deck, and you might start seeing Paleozoic start showing up a lot more at your locals, regionals, any big or small event that you might be playing at soon. But that's it, guys. Let me know down in the comments what your guys' thoughts are on why you think Paleozoic took the win at YCS Seattle. I'd really love to hear your thoughts and get a good discussion going. Thank you guys so much as always. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and also be sure to back me on Patreon because by pledging a dollar a month, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thank you so much again, and we'll see you next time.